Well, you would not believe how long I have been trying to set up this phone this morning, this camera on my phone, to find a place where I would both be not too much in the dark, not too many shadows, but no really bright shards of light coming through. So if we have to move throughout this video, that is why. I also want to keep you all quite entertained in this video whilst we are actually having a chat and a general discussion about why YouTube has to a degree saved my life. And I have done a video before called Why Minimalism Changed My Life but I'm gonna talk about a few slightly different things relatable to YouTube as well as this minimalist channel in today's video. So I think sometimes our lives can go on different trajectories and different plans than we intended. And initially we may think that it is the worst thing in the world, but sometimes it turns out not to be. And that's definitely been the case for me. For instance, I have qualifications in journalism and film. And for a while I did work in that industry. Let's just say that after doing that for a while, it wasn't something that I totally wanted to do in the field that I was doing it, which was journalistic writing. It was in the actual environment of being sort of in an office every day, I didn't want to do that. But I realised that perhaps freelance writing, I didn't mind doing, and I definitely wanted to be able to work in film, but that was such a hard, difficult industry to get into doing. And I don't know why, but until a couple of years ago, YouTube just never sort of occurred to me. And then with my undergraduate degree, for the study of what I'd actually been using as a topic to write about, I actually decided that I was very interested in philosophy and metaphysics, so that's why I decided to do that as a master's degree. And then when I completed that, I decided I'd like to combine the two, sort of do academic writing, be able to work freelance, so my time was my own. And so I went into doing that, but I still wasn't getting to fulfill this film desire that I like to be creative as well, as well as my writing. And then something just occurred to me one day, I was on YouTube watching videos and I just thought to myself, do you know what actually, why don't I do this? You know, like a haha -ha moment, why haven't I been doing this all this time? And I started making videos and it was just over two years ago now. And I think I signed up quite a little bit before for my actual YouTube account, before I actually decided to actually start making videos. And it was sort of, I think, around November 2022, 2021, yeah, November 2021. And I just thought, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to think about it. I think if we all think for too long about things, we could think forever. I thought I'm going to do it. The first video was dreadful. I know because I've had recent comments lately that a few of you were actually Few of you have seen my first few videos and you often you know tell me that I've come a long way and I have. I think when you're usually the filmmaker you know behind the camera you don't realise how sometimes awkward it can be to actually talk to the camera especially in the beginning when you're not envisaging sort of the people that regularly watch your videos and comments so the comments help because they give me you know an idea of who I'm actually talking to when I am talking and but at the beginning, you don't have that. And you definitely, perhaps as a video filmmaker, not used to being the one that is in front of the camera, rather behind it. So that took some getting used to. I would say it took, you know, quite quite a long time, which is perhaps if I had any advice for anybody starting a YouTube channel, try to do more than one, one a week to begin with, because obviously the more you do, the quicker you're gonna become used to actually talking in front of the camera. Whereas in the beginning, I think I only did about one a week, you know, often one a week. And it meant that it took me a lot longer to perhaps get a little bit more used to being in front of the camera and for my actual personality to start coming out. And it's only sort of really in the last year that I felt a lot more comfortable. Like I am just talking to you all. I even forget that the camera is there. 
and you know it's possible to really relax in front of the camera and have fun and start thinking more about what I want to say, what I want to film, how and what I want to try and bring across. And that is now a nice sort of era of my YouTube channel to be in. So much so that, as a lot of you know, that I've even started thinking about having a second channel because whilst I love talking about my minimalist content, it really has me in a pigeonhole at the moment where I've been niched down. Now, it, for some reason, it doesn't happen to every creator. Some creators are completely, you know, capable of branching out, start doing other things. But I think it depends on the look of the drawer of the YouTube algorithm and also whether you started doing it from quite early on. Whereas I was, you know, hard and fast for all minimalist content from right at the beginning. So now, yeah, that, that's the audience that I've attracted and I'm glad if I've attracted you for that audience. But so I think there's a few of you out there that don't mind the vlogs and the topical discussions and things. And that will be something that I just move across my other channel where... I actually can experiment more with the style and how I want to make the videos as well because as somebody who's obviously interested in film and video that's something that I want to play around with and be able to experiment with all these different styles and that's not really something that I can do too much on the minimalist channel although even throughout this video no doubt I've been trying to somehow entertain you all while still trying to share my story because I don't I don't want you know the videos to become stagnant and people to get bored and I also don't want to be you know it's always like a balancing act with ego of not thinking that you're willing to just sort of sit and listen to me you know me talk for and however long 20 minutes about my life because I don't want to assume that you'd all be that you'd all be interested in that but as I've perhaps titled somewhere in this video is it worth it and it, it is worth it and I think that this is a very good time for this video to actually come out because obviously I've said in the recent couple of weeks that there's been a few things that I found irritating at times but the ultimate end result of how I truly feel is that it's definitely worth it and I think I've touched on this before that despite some of the downsides perhaps of being on the internet and making videos sometimes videos that I don't know for some reason people find a little bit triggering is all the absolutely lovely comments that I get off many of you most of you saying how perhaps you found my videos helpful and useful or at the very least entertaining and that you look forward to watching them and that is a true you know, pleasant thing to find out that something that you are doing is adding value to somebody else's life. Some of you are in far, far remote places at the other side of the world away from me. And it's incredible the reach as well to witness the reach of where my videos are being viewed at. That's a, that's a lovely thing to know. And I know that I've even had people tell me that my YouTube channel has inspired them to start their own YouTube channel. And that's also, that's also a lovely thing to know. So what it's also done for me, and I think I have mentioned this again before, is that it's added a different kind of value to my life in that it makes you really, really feel like there is even more of a purpose to what you are doing because, because it is in a way influencing other people to how they might like to live their life or adapt it for their lifestyle. And I think that minimalism can only actually help people's lifestyle, help them be perhaps not stress-free, but definitely reduce stress. And if the, you know, you're interested in the eco side of things, like the eco-conscious things that I also sometimes talk about, you know, that's gonna help the environment. But even simply being a minimalist is gonna help the environment. And that's a real cause that I'm interested in as well. Because if we are, cause shoot, because if we are at least consuming less, we're definitely helping the environment. Now look, I've got a very bright hand there. Let's take it out of the sun. <laughs> it's a funny one as well though, because what I've also actually found out is that through doing YouTube, I always thought that I was actually a very passionate person that is willing to stand up for causes. And I think it's made me even more so like that because I have now got a mouthpiece to be able to talk about some issues if I want. But what I'm learning in this new era perhaps of my YouTube channel is learning how to balance some of my perhaps zen 
and calm philosophies with also being passionate like that sometimes is a difficult thing to balance and I am going to do some videos about mindfulness in the future and also how as a passionate person who when even when it's removed from myself there are some topics that I am very very passionate about and sometimes it's hard to not be reactionary to those things that we feel strongly about and rather to not actually feel nothing as sometimes things are perhaps hinted at or intimated in Zen Buddhism, but to rather allow yourself to feel that inside, but be careful and balance how you react to it if you react at all. Whereas I think some people think that it is completely about being stone cold and not actually reacting as somebody who's sort of interested in Zen and even in the theory of minimalism and letting go of sort of emotional clutter and reacting to people. I think those two things can be brought together and it is a tricky one when it's to do with a very, very emotionally impactive and responsive subject and that's something that I'm still learning about in this new era and that's another reason why you know YouTube has sort of saved my life changed my life in quite a big way really because it's definitely been good for personal growth because I don't think in general you know in our everyday lives we come into contact with quite as many people like even in an average workplace let's say there might be I don't know 100, 200 people that you come into contact with on a daily basis. But on YouTube, sometimes it's thousands of people and thousands of comments and thousands of people viewing and perceiving and reacting to you. So then you have to get used to how to either be to be not reactive to other people and seeing a general consensus of what people, you know, do think and learning how to be balanced with your responses to that and being fully grounded in knowing your own own worth and who you really are. And that is a very, very interesting journey to go on. And I would say that it actually only makes you stronger. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video, a little bit of an update for anybody that's following along on the 14 items that I'm living with for 30 days. Today, as you can see, it's a plat day, no bobble, and I have managed to flatten down my fringe in all kinds of various concoctions and remedies that I will be sharing with you all, either at the halfway point, which I think is the Sunday coming, or at the very end. I've got all kinds of tips and tricks to show you all, and areas that I have been struggling and probably will continue to struggle for the end of this time, and my final conclusions. So I hope you've all enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.